businesses look at these very safe, repeatable, stable franchises, whereas as, as creators and certainly as, you know, as consumers and gamers, the reason why we're interested is all the stuff that got to be where it is now, which are really kind of you know, risk taking, exciting, and different you know, before the genres were really cemented in, or kids you know, playing games that you, know, you didn't think of it as this is in a style of games you know, to work much, much more. It would have been fresh new experiences, there was less barrier to entry, less cost, I suppose, up front, whereas now that push for safety. So, I mean, are we prepared to say that you know, sequels and franchises are something we hate? You know, I guess it's a, so it's a natural evolution, right, to, to start seeing more solid, like, genres, right? I mean, games have been around for a few decades, and, and people, FPS, I like FPS. I'll always make an FPS, I like FPS, I'll buy an FPS, I want to play an FPS. It's a, it's a solt and stable genre. So I guess it's a natural evolution to have these prop up. And we don't need to hate, hate on the genre, though. But we just need to, if it doesn't keep changing and, and doing interesting things within that, or it's not being good, we can hate on that, right? I have no problem with sequels as long as the sequel is really expanding and evolving on the original. It's like a whole new game, really. It's just kind of taking the original concept, and that's what a sequel is supposed to do. I've loved sequels this year. It's been such yeah, a great... Yeah, that's the best game we've had this year. Yeah, it's killed Doom 2, and, I'm sorry, Assassin's Creed 2, and, Uncharted, um, 2. Uncharted 2, and Fear 2, even. You know, I've, I've really enjoyed all of these sequels, Forza, which are all, all build on the technology they already had, and just give us more. You know, with Assassin's Creed, they, they knew that they didn't have everything they wanted in the game, and they knew that there were repetitive elements that people would probably not like, but it was still a great game, and they shipped it. And they listened to people as and, well. Yeah, they, they listened, and, and they built on that, and they made it a better game, and it wasn't just another episode, and that's all about like that. I guess the good thing with the sequels is it means it gives developers to work on what didn't work the first time and creates what's ultimately better. There seems to be a rule of threes with these things is that the first one is always fairly good. The second one is always the best. The third one's where it starts to go down the other. <laughs> I've seen this observed in like uh, the Spider-Man movie series. <laughs> um, Matrix. Matrix. Oh. Awesome game example would be nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Silent Hill, maybe? Silent Hill 3 I didn't like so much as the other guys, the previous ones. Sense of time. I didn't know, I thought that was going downhill right for game 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Sense of Time is something I wanted to bring up, actually, because um, what I found as a general rule with sequels is that if the first game wasn't set up with sequels in mind, like Sense of Time, because that was a very tightly well-contained story, it fit it entirely in one game. Like, Totally, because it ends with spoiler warning, going back in time to the start of the, the events of the game. And um, also love games like Bioshock, which again have a very, very tightly self contained story. But a sequel is generally, it's more blatantly just trying to wrench more stuff out of Bioshock 2 team, I hope. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, just, it's clearly just trying to wrench something out that was never intended to, to go on. And that's, as a rule, I've been finding. Things tend to be worse when they try to do that. Sequels tend to be worse when they try to do that. I worry over the sequels at the same time. That's okay, pay through, but story-wise, it's appalling. But the old emo fringe for Prince has suddenly grown. I guess it's tricky for developers to... I mean, a sequel's a pretty big deal, right? You want to give people what they wanted from the first one, but you can't just give the same game. Or people are going to go, yeah, okay. You know, like, look at Skate 2, I really... I, I enjoyed Skate 2, it was great, but it just had no impact on me compared to the first one. So it is a challenge to, to do something right with the second game, and so I guess if they, by the third time, it, 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 third round, it can get a bit tiring, especially because often developers change for like, the, once you start getting past number two, right, it's quite common. I'm not aware really that I'm sure that sequels are the problem. I mean, if you go to a you know, Nintendo press <coughs> conference, and you know, for some reason there's, there's no press there, they're only fanboys, and you know, any time a sequel is announced, it's, that, you know, that's what people get excited about, and that's where all the news are. Um, but you know, I think the real problem is that you know how hard it is today to get a great idea funded. I mean, I'm sure you guys have boons of great ideas, and and yet you know, you're constantly frustrated that you can't get any off the ground um, because of how conservative the publishers are. So you know, the, there's a big market for sequels. No, I don't think anyone has a problem with that. But the, you know, it's how difficult it is now to get original IP off the ground that's the problem. So I played uh, the new Super Mario Brothers on Wii. Yeah, it, but it was just chaotically not like four players the wheel and then the new colors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so yeah, the one thing, it, the new, the one new thing it tried to do made a complete mess. 
And everything else, it was just, it was just like Mario 3 with bits of Mario World thrown in. Like just, and what exactly has been the point of the last 15 years if that's all you're going to do? Even if it's just two and a half D, which doesn't really count as an upgrade. I mean, all the Mario games up until New Super Mario Brothers were at least trying to push it forward in a further, yeah, push it forward further in each one. Super Mario World, Super Mario Yoshi's Island, with that unique baby based gameplay mechanic, and uh, unique art style. And of course, Mario 64 with 3D, Mario Sunshine, brought in the whole water mechanic, Mario Galaxy. Really quite superlative, pure platforming action. And it really has seemed to me they just don't know where to go after that. I think also it comes down to that whole idea of not wanting to take the reins, particularly with the Mario franchise. They're so, I think, um, precious with it. They don't want to do anything too out there in case the Sword Mario fans are going to write Mario. Well, they've, they've um, been a bit weird with it. Like, um, if you play the Mario RPGs or the Paper Mario games, they tend to be a bit self referential and a bit. Uh, quite sophisticatedly funny at times as well. I guess it's also, you know, it's a, I mean, Mario's very comforting. Uh, when I was playing New Super Mario, it was, it was like, okay, this is, this is, I've done this before, even the first level, it looks like the first level from Mario. Um, I was thinking, is, this isn't for me, this isn't made for me, this is made for, for newcomers, because there's nothing here for me, really. Uh, I've done this before, except now I'm, you know, I'm frustrated in multiplayer, because it's pausing randomly, and, and into the lava. So, um, it's, I just think, you yeah, know, that's not for me, and that's, I can, I can hate it, but it, I can understand it as well. Paradoxical as well, I mean, a game designed for newcomers, featuring characters with a 20 year fan base. Yeah, it's weird. But it's funny how to learn that fan base would be that. I was talking to a guy who loved it, and I was like, but what about this? And then I made like, you know, his response was just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like talking to, like, Probably shouldn't finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's like talking to people who believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> you still finished it, why didn't you? <laughs> why didn't you finish it? Well, you know, once you say that, you have to say what's on your mind, I guess. <laughs> Someone think of a better way to say that, but you know what I mean? People are just blindly dogmatic about this sort of thing. Well, we're all fanboys of certain things, I guess, in our hearts, and girls. Um, if I could deflect for a moment um, from the, from the God reference. Uh, I, I, I've been frustrated by digital distribution a little bit this year, just for the um, just the cost of it. And I understand that um, undercutting a retailer is not a good thing to do for uh, for a publisher. Or, um, but you know, when you release something like the PSP Go, which is a giant thumb drive, really, to my opinion, I don't want to pay more for a game that I can't resell when I can just buy it in a shop. And then if I don't like it, resell it or sell it on, and that's that's the game of me not wanting to do that. So there's nothing appealing to me in that because I don't, you know, I'm not rich and I can't afford to just buy 20 games. And even though I love it, I absolutely love the design of it. I, uh, I don't, yeah, that, I hate that. I hate I hate having to pay more all the time, constantly for every bit of DLC and every bit of digital thing I purchase. Why is it always costing me more than if I walk down the road or if I if I uh, buy it online uh, and get it? sent to me, or if I, um, you know, why am I paying for a, a, a 11 gig download uh, off my off my internet, uh, off my cab, and then have it bug out, I have to do that again, I have to do 22 gigs worth of, of um, my cab loan for the month, and it costs, and it still costs me more than, and I'm still paying month by month, you know, it just, I just feel like I always have to pay more than, than I should, just slightly more than I should, and it makes me feel cheated. Yeah, I didn't hate that old DLC mindset. We haven't quite finished the game, so we'll just pack a few more things and release it a few months down the line for extra money. Just do it all, because that's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, who do we hate? For? I mean, is this to do with the fact that the retailers control so much of this industry? I mean, there's an argument, I've sort of spoken to people around the world about what well, they hate about the games industry, and some of them uh, have expressed that there's, you know, there's a handful of, a very small number of companies that really do control the industry. And uh, yeah, keep going back in the same well. But I mean, perhaps they themselves over a barrel even more so by the, by the retailers. If that fades away, is there some hope there for us? Give some order, perhaps not as important as you do to become more competitive. Well, it is true that EB games are EB, <laughs> like in every way. And I, didn't, I really do think digital distribution is a positive step with things like Steam and Xbox Live Arcade, because it means virtually anyone can, can release a game 
So, and it happened on the iPhone as well. 